Ben. train for another wagon? Anything wrong? No, nothing wrong. We don't usually like to pick up a wagon escorted to us by the law. Well, we came to see him off. Nothing more to it. What's your destination? Anywhere. This train's going clear through to the coast. Suits me. Any women with you? No. Just me and my... Just the two of us. Oh, we might as well get acquainted. My name is Duke Shannon. Ben Morrell. My boy, Terry. We better get rolling. I'll show you your place in the train and tell you about the passage money and the train rules when we get to camp tonight. told him about the boy. I wouldn't have done any good. He's Ben Morrell's problem, Joe. The cross he'll have to bear. A little trouble, Mr. Morrell? I can manage. Oh, no offense intended. Most folks need a little help their first day with a wagon train. Here, let me give you a hand with that. I said I could manage. Sure, mister. Sorry I bothered you. Mr. Hawks said to ask if you'd care to have supper with us.
Maybe the boy? The boy stays here with me. McCaw's been mooning about that girl he met in Billings. We're liable to get a message any day saying that he got himself all hitched up. What for? What for? <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of the birds and the bees? Psst. Well, sure, Charlie, I have, but uh, I didn't think that you had. <laughs> well, they're coming. He'd better eat his own food. It serves him right. Unfriendly? Downright touchy. Something isn't right with that boy and him. Well, I've been here to talk go around. But, Duke, let's don't judge a man by the way he looks. That isn't what I mean, Bill. What do you mean? I don't know. It's just a feeling. Terry? I know it ain't nothing fancy. It's just stupid. It's good for a grown boy. You gotta eat something, Terry. You get yourself sick this way. It's no good. Thinking about it, I mean. Won't help. I don't want any food. And I don't want to eat with you, either. I won't force you. They didn't want me back there, did they? It wasn't them or you, it was me. I thought it best. He believed you, the sheriff and the others. But they didn't believe me. Well, it, it don't matter what they believe now. We're going to California. It matters to me. And I ain't going to California. I'm going back home. Smells good. Better than Charlie's stew. Understand now why you didn't feel like joining us. Come for your money. How much? Well, depends on how far you're going with us. Of course, I can wait till Mr. Hale gets back. Is that enough to get me to California? What's riding you, Mr. Morell? I'm accustomed to doing for myself. Anything wrong with that, Mr. Hawks? Well, it's a good trait, usually, until you carry it too far. But you're not alone here. There's better than 250 people on this train. They're all headed west to California, more than a 1,000 miles away. We're going to run into storms and freezes, breakdowns, Indians. Some of us will get sick and some will die. We'll find that we are going to have to help one another to make it through. I do my share of the work. We'll expect you to. I don't know why you left where you came from, and I don't much care. But almost everyone on this train has their own personal reasons why they pulled up hometown stakes and are heading west. You're entitled to yours. But you're going to find that this is a long, hard trip Make it a lot easier on yourself if you come out of that shell of yours and start mixing with other folks. Most folks have long noses. 
I do my share of the work. But I'm not a friendly man, and I don't much care for the company of other folk. I'm sorry you feel that way. Good night, Ben. Let me alone, Ralph. Go back to the wagon. No. It's the devil's work you're doing. She promised me that it would work at the full of the moon. She said I was cursed, that it was my only hope. That gypsy camp outside Fort Rollins. That's where the money went. Oh, Ralph, you... You know I've tried everything else. Doctors, midwives, prayers. A barren woman is a lonely woman, Ralph. If it's the Lord's will. The Lord's will? The Lord's will that I be childless. We've been married for ten years, Ralph. And in all that time... Letty, come back to the wagon. No. Please. I'll come back later. I'll come back later. Hello. Are you alone? Yes, ma'am. Would you like a piece of that apple pie? <laughs> well, now you come right over here. Come on. What's your name? Uh, Terry. Terry. Oh, that's a nice name. Sit down, Terry. Sit down. I'm Mrs. Morse. Here. This is very good. Now. Well, go ahead. Please. You are hungry. <laughs> Didn't you have your supper? Didn't your father feed you? He didn't, did he? He doesn't like me. And that's the way he punishes you, by letting you go without your supper. Well, I'll just fix you some. <laughs> Ralph, this boy is hungry. I just saw your father, boy. He's worried about you. Well, he should be leaving a boy go without his supper. Now, you go right ahead. I'll fix you something. Terry? Past our bedtime. We better get back to our wagon. Terry? You come again sometime. Better go with you, Paul.
He ain't my pa. Son, look at me. I'm your father. I want you. You're the only thing in this world that means anything to me at all. I hate you. You shot my mother. You did it, you. I want to go home. your own breakfast. Charlie, was that you I heard moaning all last night? Well, what if it was? Hey, you're sounding a little bit mean. Well, so, what happened to your jaw? You look like an overgrown chipmunk with a hickory nut two sizes too big for him. Too thick, Bill. Kept me awake all night. I think it's a great big wizard, too. Look. Huh? Yeah, you lost those a long time ago. Mm. My grandpa used to give me a chaw tobacco. Work like a chaw. Oh, I tried it. Didn't help me at all, Luke. I tried it all night. Charlie, this old... Ah! You stay where you are. You come any close to me with pictures, and I'll knock a hole in that hollow head of yours. I mean it. Charlie, there's a half a bottle of whiskey in the supply wagon. Why don't you go get it and try some on that tooth of yours? Yeah. Oh, wait, if that doesn't work, we'll have to take you back to that town we passed yesterday and have the dentist yank it out for you. Oh, no. That'll work, Bill. I'll get the whip. You, uh, good hand with flapjacks? Nope. You? No. Well, I guess this is better than starving until Charlie's back on the job. That yeah, doesn't worry me half as much as that sky up there. You know, Duke, we're in for a spell of real bad weather. Better get an early start this morning and take the North Fork Road as far as Ben's Canyon. Check the river. That storm hits before we get there. We'll be stalled for a week on this side of it. Little boy, Ralph. 
It isn't right that a man like that should have such a boy while we're all alone. Now, Letty. Do you know he's as ugly as sin? It just doesn't seem possible that he could be the father of that boy. It makes me uneasy just knowing that he's driving behind us. He hasn't bothered anyone. They say that he was run out of that town we passed through this morning. Nobody knows why. He's such an evil-looking man. It must have been something terrible he did. Chester Carbine. Ever handle one before? It was about your age when my grandpa showed me how to handle one. We used to go deer hunting together. Here, take a look. It's all right. I took the cartridges out. One thing to remember about a rifle, though. Don't ever point it at anybody unless you mean to shoot. Mm. No! What the boy said, Fred. Lady and I both heard him. The boy ran off like he was afraid of him. Upset my wife pretty badly. She was only trying to be nice to the boy. I always figured there was something wrong about him. The way he joined us back then. With the sheriff's escort all around his wagon like there was a run out of town. We're peaceful folks here, Ralph. Just plain, decent people with nothing to hide. I figure we ought to do something about him. If he wasn't good enough for them townspeople back there, I don't figure he's good enough for us. It's the boy I'm worried about. You can save yourself the trouble, mister. The boy is my responsibility. Ralph here says the boy ain't your son. Don't you go getting high and mighty with us, mister. The name is Mr. Morell. We've got a right to know. <laughs> Look out, Zeb, he's pulling the knife. All right, break it up. Inside and lay down, Charlie. I'll drive a spell. Thanks, Duke. I uh, say, you suppose Mr. Hale would mind if I had a little sip of that bottle of medicine he carries in my? Now, you heard, Bill. No more of that. Only thing will put you out of your misery, Charlie, now is to have it yanked. You think it'll hurt? Uh, not a bit. It hurts now. The last time I had a tooth pulled, I was in the army. Well, I hear tell things have changed a little bit since then, Charlie. They got a newfangled gas to use now. Don't feel a thing. Gas? Ain't that dangerous? Well, uh, Bill says if you'd rather howl a little, he can do the job just as good and save your money besides. Yeah, Bill said, huh? You just drive the team. I'll take my chances with that dental man. And don't hit any bumps, either. Mm. Mm. Uh. Roll them out. Let's go! Yeah! I'd like to see 
a man who takes care of his wagon. Makes it easier on the rest of us. I'm not thinking about the others. You should. You know, like the wagon, a little greasy human kindness goes a long way. I've seen many little human kindness here or elsewhere, Mr. Hawks. You come here to lecture me on it? I'm afraid I'm not much of a hand at that. Come to apologize for drawing that gun on you this morning. You don't have to apologize to me. Sorry you feel that way, Ben. Well, don't be. I've lived with this face long enough to know what I look like. You're not the first man to judge me by it, and you won't be the last. When I was a kid, I was the ugliest kid in town. I get used to it. You get used to a lot of things. Just don't come around here talking to me about human kindness. The doll was on the ground. I wasn't looking. You come here, Tessie. Right away. But Mama, he's a nice man. He's gonna fix Tina for me. A little glue. Be just like new. Do like your mother says, girl. Mr. You leave my little girl alone, or so help me, I'll take a bullwhip to you. The grease of human kindness. Thank <laughs> you. 
storm in the hills, Duke, I figure the river will be rising fast. Can we cross? Yeah, if we make it before dark. We better keep him rolling. How is he? Uh, worse than ever. Well, there's no sense in listening to him moan another night. Take a couple saddle horses and ride back to that town where we picked up the morel wagon. Ought to be somebody there qualified to pull teeth. We'll drive the wagon. I was driving wagons before you were chasing grasshoppers, sonny boy. We'll meet you on the other side of the river. Come on, Charlie. You get back to that boarding house, I'll buy you a big juicy steak. That's, that's just what I need. trip so far. All right. He's in the wagon. Isn't it kind of early for a boy that age? What's the matter? Is he sick? No. Nope. He's more comfortable in there studying his lessons. Studying? There's no reason why a youngster shouldn't keep up with the schoolwork, even on a wagon train. Well, I guess not. Fixing clocks a hobby of yours? My work, Mr. Hawks. Had my own shop for 20 years. I don't feel much like small talk, Mr. Hawks, if you'll excuse me. Well, I won't keep you. Just making the rounds of the camp. We're due for some bad weather tonight or tomorrow. You got any leaks in that canvas of yours, you better get them fixed before you turn in tonight. You got a rifle handy? I keep one locked up in my trunk. Well, you better get it out and load it. We're in Shoshone country. Expect trouble from the Indians at any time. Well, I'm not much hand with a rifle. Yeah, well, too few of them on this train are. But from here on out, we're going to have to depend quite a bit on those rifles. Ralph, do you hear me? We've got to do something about that boy. Ralph, now don't make out that you don't hear me. I've known you better than 11 years, and you always do this to me. You always play deaf when I want a decision from you. It's none of our business, Letty. Well, whose business is it, then? I heard that boy crying last night. I know I did. You're wearing yourself sick over that boy. Now you've got to forget him. It ain't for us to question the Lord's will. We have our health, Letty. We have each other. Maybe that's all we have allotted to us in this life. It's not enough. A woman needs more than a man. Why should a man like that be favored when I've been denied? Do you really want a child? Why, you know I do. We could have adopted the Tilson child back home. I wanted my own. I'm a woman no different from the rest of them. I wanted my own flesh and blood, not someone else's. How do you think I feel watching the sons of all our friends growing up around us? I'd have settled for the Tilson boy. And I'd have had all those women laughing at me. Oh, no. I had more pride than that. 
But now... But now you want the Morel boy. Yes, I do. Letty, do you want that boy for himself? To raise, to love? Or do you want him only out of pride to make you feel equal to the other women around you? Does it matter why I want the child? Yes, yes, Letty, it does. Where are you going? I'm going to see the boy. Have you eaten? No. I wasn't hungry. Oh, you poor child. You don't have to be afraid of me. I have some pie left over from last night. Would you like some? You're afraid of him, aren't you? Oh, that terrible man. Who is he? He isn't your father, you said. Who is he? Do you want to stay with him? No. I hate him. You won't have to stay with him, not one moment longer. I want to go home. Back to my mom. Where is she? Why isn't she with you? He said she's dead. But she isn't dead. She isn't. No. Get in the wagon, Terry. You have no right to this boy. I'd be obliged, Mrs. Morse, if you attend to your own affairs. Your husband is probably waiting for his supper. I suggest you fix it for him. You can't get away with this. We're decent, law-abiding people on this train. And we will not stand for your mistreating this boy. Get out of here. You have no right to him. And I'm going to see that he's taken away from you. And I'm going to see to it right now. Looks like... It'll be a bad night. Hope Charlie and Duke have sense enough to stay into town. Sure would have liked to have been here when that dentist clamped down on old Charlie's tooth. Mr. Hawks, we would like a word with you. Well, that's what I'm here for, ma'am. Go ahead, tell him, Ralph. It's about the Morell boy. What did he do? Oh, it isn't the boy. It's that evil man that calls himself his father. Now, we feel that that man has no right to that boy. And we want you to take him away from him. Uh, you just hold on a minute, Mrs. Morse. Neither me nor you or anybody else has the right to take a boy away from his father. Yes, but he's not his father. You sure? The boy told us so himself last night. Anybody can see he ain't the boy's father. How? Why, by just looking at him. Mr. Hawks, I got two boys of my own. And both of them are the spitting image of me when I was their age. Now, lucky for you. Mrs. Morse, I'm sorry, but I have no right to act in this matter. No right? Well, we have rights. We're decent people, and we do not intend to let that man abuse that boy. Well, we don't know who he is. We don't know why he joined the wagon train. Now, if that man is not his father, just who is he? There's one way to find out. We'll ask Ben Morrell.
Seems to be some concern here about you and the boy, Ben. You're concerned, Mr. Hawks, or his? My concern, too. Are you the boy's father? Yes. He's lying. The boy said no. Is the boy up? Don't you believe me? I do. Some of these people don't. You better ask him to come out. Won't do any good. You see, he doesn't want us to talk to the boy. Terry? You better come out of there, Terry. man your father? Well, is he? Tell him, Terry. You don't have to be afraid now. His name is Terence Baker. I married his widowed mother when he was three years old. Is that right, Terry? He's afraid that's why he won't answer. I don't believe you. I raised him for almost eight years. He is my boy, Mr. Hawks. Then why did you leave the town of Shoot? My wife died. Now, will you good people please leave us alone? No. I'm not going to leave that boy with you. Why, he's afraid you can see that. If this man is his stepfather and raised him as he claims, then why is the boy afraid to admit it? Mrs. Morris. I want that boy. I can make a decent home for him. Get her out of here, Mr. Hawks. Nobody has taken my boy away from you. Get back to your wagons. You believe him. Till I learn different. Then I sent Duke and Charlie back to town. If there's anything that they can find out about you and the boy back there, I know they will. Most likely. Wouldn't let him sleep. You boys looking forward to spending the night in the calaboose? Oh. Hello, Sheriff. We were told to try this place for Mr. Bentley. He pulls teeth. That's after his office hours. Yeah, but this is an emergency. That sure looks like it. Hey, you'll find Bentley over at the church. Uh, he leads the men's choir. That settles it, Duke. There ain't no psalm singing preacher going to put his hand in my mouth. 
Well, Bentley ain't partial to anyone interfering with him when he's at choir practice. We'll join him with the choir. Which way to the church? That... Yeah, aren't you with the wagon train that came by this way yesterday? Yeah. How's Ben Morrell making out with a boy? Why? Uh, nothing. Now, just a minute, Sheriff. I'd like to ask you about Ben Morrell. He's not made himself too popular a man with the train, and some of the folks have been talking. Rumor about him being run out of this town. I'm sorry to hear that. No, he, he wasn't run out of town. Ben, well, something happened that made it hard for him to stay. I was hoping there wouldn't be any trouble. Ben asked me not to say anything when he joined the wagon train, but well, I've been thinking it over and worrying about it. I'll come along with you, lend a little official support for you with Bentley. Yeah, it's a long, tragic story about Ben and the boy. <laughs> They've gone. Who's gone? Ben Morell and the boy. You should have let me take that boy last night. Now Lord knows what will happen to them. Anybody see him leave? No, not that we know of. Must have left during the storm. If they didn't try to make it back across that river. Hmm. Thought you two had better sense than this. Why don't you stay in town? Well, I plan to. After we had a talk with the sheriff, we figured we'd better get back right away. Yeah, it's about Ben Morell. And the boy. Yeah. I knew there was something wrong with that evil man. Not the man, the boy. He accidentally killed his ma. Shot her with a rifle. Boy killed his own mother? It's not a very happy story, Bill. From what I got from the sheriff, she wasn't much of a woman. She deserted Ben and the boy shortly after she married Morell. Just ran off. She came back about a year later. But she didn't come back to make a home for Ben and the boy. The sheriff said Ben and his wife had fought. Terry came home because he thought Ben was hurting her. He had a rifle and there was an accident. Ben never let the boy know how his ma really felt about him. The sheriff said she hated being tied down with a child. And Ben Morrell wasn't run out of town? No. It was his idea to leave. He was thinking of the boy. <laughs> settled again. You lied to me. I've never lied to you. Well, wait till the other wagons are gone, then we'll go back. Back to Ma? No. 
Sometime we'll go back there, but not now. You just don't want to ever let me see her again, do you? You want me to believe that she's dead. That I shot my own mother. Listen to me, Terry. She is dead. You've got to accept that. You've got to face the truth. No. No, that's not the truth. It was an accident. I love my mother. I loved her. And she loved me. You know that. She was your mother. I couldn't shoot my own mother. I just couldn't. It was you who shot her. No, Terry. You've got to understand what happened. You thought I was hurt here. I was only trying to help her, to help you. I didn't want you to come home and find her drunk again. No. No, that's not true. I didn't do it. I loved her. I love my mother. If she's dead, you killed her. <laughs> Stay on the road. Turn north about half a mile up. Shoshone country. We'll need eight or ten men with good horses. We'll have to spread out wide in order to find them. How come? I think we owe Ben Morrell that much. to his side. Where's Terry? Oh, he's probably up there hiding someplace. He tried to kill you, didn't he, Ben? That's not his fault. Not his fault, Mr. Hawks. He killed your wife, didn't he? That was an accident. He saw me struggling with his mother. He tried to stop it. It's the boy that matters now. It's Terry. He's got to be made to understand. He's got to realize I love him. I love that boy and he needs me. Then he shot you. He didn't know what he was doing. Now he's out there somewhere alone. Mr. Hawks, you've got to find him for me. You've got to find him. Get him in a wagon, put a bandage on his side. Come on, Duke. <laughs> Son, your pa's all right. I don't want to go back to him. I want to go back home to my ma. Your ma's dead. We know she's dead, and we know you killed her. We know you didn't mean to, but it's what happened. I know it's a pretty hard thing to face. But a boy has to learn to stand up to things, even if they hurt. You don't want to believe. It's easier for you to run away from it. Blot it out of your mind inside you. I know you know the truth, don't you? 
There's some things between a man and woman, son, that are best known only to themselves. Your ma had her problems. She and your pa quarreled. You couldn't understand this. There was something between them. You thought she was being hurt, so you wanted to protect her. I loved her. We know, son. But she is dead. And you can't go back. You can only pray. Paul's waiting for you, Terry. He loves you and he wants you very much. Understand it can help that boy. One day he's going to make a fine man. <laughs> 